Hey guys, John here. Welcome to Pigments Drum Week. This week we're talking about kick drums, snare drums, hi-hats, cymbals, and toms. So basically what makes up a good drum kit. Now for this specific video, we're going to be focusing on the kick drum. Now for this demonstration, I put together a drum groove that's all done in pigments. I have the lead in Diva and then the bass in Vital. So with that being said, here we go. Alright, so I think you get the idea. So we are going to be making this kick drum right here. Now this is a basic acoustic style kick drum and from here you can kind of launch to doing different types of sounds, more distortion, different types of effects, but this is a good starting point to then create your own type of sounds for your track that makes it a little bit more cohesive. So with that being said, we, we should talk about a little bit about what a kick drum is, right? If we're trying to recreate it. So we have a big drum and we have the beater hitting the skin of the drum. So that's going to be the attack and that's going to be kind of that clicky, noisy spot. And then we have the low end stuff that's going to be the resonant tone of the actual shell. So with that being said, there's kind of two parts we really need to mesh together. Now, within this type of patch, this pigment's routing is a little bit different than you might be used to. So over here on the filter routing where it says split, yours might say sum by default. But if we click this here, we see the split mode. And that means filter one is going to FX bank A, and then filter two is going to FX bank B. And that's useful because if we go to our effects, we have different things that we want to affect the different tones with. And then here at the very end, using auxiliary sends, we can kind of mush these or mish these, whatever we want to say together and make one cohesive sound. So with that being said, back in our synth section here, we're using the utility and the engine two, the analog one for the attack for the noisy part of the drum. And then we're using the wavetable engine for the fundamental tone, the low end. So let's turn these off here, the utility and the engine two. And this is kind of where I always start. I say, okay, how low do I want this kick drum to sound? And what frequency do I want this resonance to be at? So with that being said, I always kind of go with something between 49 or 50, the lowest maybe 45 and the highest maybe 52, but I kind of almost always aim for 49 and that's because that is a G note. So when we think of this almost in a musical sense, 49 hertz is a G. And then once we do different types of tom drums, we can always do different octaves or different kind of close to the octave. So it sounds more of like a cohesive type of drum rather than just different random instruments. So which really, we really do have to use our ears when we're making the toms and kind of make the fill sound like it's a correct kind of thing. Whereas toms are very similar to kick drums, but there's small little differences that we do need to talk about, which we're going to get to after this kick drum thing. Because once you understand a kick drum, the tom drums are going to be very easy to understand. So the first thing is we need to realize that we need 49 hertz. And you might be wondering, what is this window here? So we're actually not using the wavetable engine at all. We have this volume all the way down for our wavetable. We are using the modulator. So if you click this tune thing where it says hertz, you just might say ratio or something like that. But if you go all the way to the right where it says hertz, now we have a signal generator and we can specifically decide what frequency we want this resonation to be at. And like I just said, this one is going to be 49. Now with any type of drum like this, we're going to ha always have to have some type of pitch dive, right? A little bit goes a long way, depending if you want to go a more stylistic pitch dive to make a tr uh, kick drum sound a little bit different. But this is basically, like I said in the beginning, kind of a good foundation to start from. Once you kind of understand this, then you can kind of change the, the pitch envelope or the pitch function in this case and really customize your kick drum. So what's happening here is that we are landing always on 49 hertz, this G. Now this function is basically going downwards and it's moving at a, at a rate of 20 hertz. So we change this rate. Usually yours might be in sync or something like that, more of a BPM type of thing. So we want to change this to hertz because if we change our tempo, we don't want this envelope or this function to change the speed. We want to set value. Now that's why we go for hertz and it's going to be all the way to the top at 20 hertz. So again, this is going to be the fundamental tone. Now that's pretty much correct. So now we have to think, think what are we routing this through? So we have this getting sent to filter number one, and this is over here, which is really not doing anything. As you can see, the cutoff is at 20K because we don't really need to filter anything out because this is just a sine wave with a, with a pitch dive. So we don't need to filter stuff out in this case here. 
So that's what this first pitch dive is doing. So this is moving at a very small amount at 0.12. Now with things like this, you always want to use your right mouse button to move things in a very precise type of way. So take a listen how different this would sound if this was kind of an excessive modulation. So right now we're at 0.12. If we right click and drag this up to like 0.40, we're gonna have something kind of painful like that. So let's bring that back to 0 0.12 here. And it kind of works. And these are one of those things where you really have to sit with this for a while if you're synthesizing your own kick drum for your track. You really wanna make sure, okay, how much is this too much pitch dive? Is the pitch dive too fast? So on and so forth. Is the shape here correct? Do you want just a, like a one-to-one -one linear downward ramp here? Or do you want it to go quicker or slower? That's kind of the meticulousness that I'm talking about. So for this example, this straight linear from the top to the bottom over 20 hertz seemed to work out pretty fine for this. Now we also want to modulate the volume of this modulator, which has been done by envelope number two at 0.98. So let's take a look at envelope two and see what's happening here. So envelope two, the attack is gonna be one millisecond. The decay is 240 milliseconds, no sustain, and then release 100 milliseconds, which doesn't really matter too much because at the very end of this, we're gonna then do the envelope VCA, the main overall thing, because we, we wanna make sure that each part, each envelope is correct. As you can see, these two different envelopes are, are slightly different. And that's important because there's two different sounds that we need to contour. And once you mash them all together, then on the envelope VCA, that's kind of when we do our final contouring of our sound. So with that being said here, this envelope number two is basically just modulating the volume of this fundamental here. Pretty basic. Okay, so moving on from there, that's probably the easiest part, I would say. The more difficult or more meticulous stuff comes in the noise. So let's turn off this engine one here and let's look at the engine two and let's take a listen to that. So what we're actually hearing here is not necessarily just noise, which seems very popular to do. This is done a slightly different way. This is gonna be done through frequency modulation. So we have these pitch notes here off for these oscillators here. And what we're doing is we're having voices all the way at eight, the detune all the way at 100%, and the stereo kind of dragged down because we don't want a stereo attack kind of sound. Now here, we're also modulating the volume, but this one's gonna be envelope number three, which has slightly different settings here. So this attack is one millisecond, the decay is 215 milliseconds, zero sustain, and then again, 100 hertz. And the curve is also very, very, very important. So this is at negative 7.28, whereas envelope two was 2.16. And probably once we get these two tones pretty good, the most meticulous part is really getting the envelopes right. Because we wanna make sure that it sounds how we want it to sound. We don't want the low end to hang around for too long or for this attack to hang around for too long and all that. We have to have these work together at slightly different values. Now these two here, these two oscillators here, they are gonna be at the default pitch here. They're both gonna be sine waves, even the third one. And these two are getting frequency modulated by this third one here, as we can see oscillator number three is frequency modulating both of these at about 0.493 amount. And then the third oscillator is up 36 semitones. So this is more so where we get the tonality of the attack. So if we change this value down here, we can slightly change that tone. And what you also could do as well, and sometimes I do this on snare drums, but on this FM amount, we can put a slight little random thing over here and kind of just change things over time so every hit's slightly different here. So moving on from there, we have this basic type of click sound, this, this uh, beater getting struck by the, uh, by the pedal. And we can see here this filter mix is going to number two, and this is using the multi-mode and a band pass. Now, now we see that this is moving every time we hit it because we want a little bit of motion going on through that filter change. And this is getting changed by function number two. So what is function number two? This is also a downward ramp, but the speed is a little bit different at 4.95 hertz. So a little bit slower than what we had before for function number one that was at 20. Because we do want a little change of this filter going on here. And this resonance amount is kind of what I was talking about for the FM, but this is more so done for the resonance. If we look at this random, it's 0 0.08, so slight amount and slight modulation. But what's happening is every single note that we hit, this resonance is gonna be slightly different, resulting in a different sound for the attack every single time. 
So let's look at this random modulation right here. We have sample and hold, sample from white noise, and then re-triggered by the poly keyboard. So every note that we hit, we get a different value, which kind of makes it a little bit more realistic in that sense. It's these small kind of screws that we have to adjust to make sure that the whole cohesive thing comes together nicely. So that's basically this engine number two in a nutshell. And then the volume, again, is going to be modulated by envelope number three that we covered just a little bit ago. So next brings us to the utility engine. So this is going to be just a little bit more attack, but a little bit more top endy. So this is also getting routed to filter number two, which has the same modulations, except here we're using this called modern kick. And it's a very good pointy kind of quick attack, a quick transient to really make sure that we know when the kick has been hit. So with this mixed with this other one, We can see that with only engine number two, we hear the, the sound of that noise, but as soon as we bring in that utility engine, it gives it a little bit more click, a little bit more presence. So take a listen to this. So this is nice mixing two different kinds of sound in one. And then once we bring the fundamental in, we almost start to not really notice them as individual sounds, but more so as just a kick drum, like what we would expect to hear. So this is the sound generation part. Now comes the effects, which are very crucial. So let's turn these first two off and let's look at the fundamental again. So over in the effects, what we have going on here is that since we talked about engine number one going to uh, filter number one, which is going to, which is going here, filter number one is going outputted to FXA, which means only the fundamental is going to be going to be affected by FXA bank, which right now we don't really need too much. We just have a, a distortion on exponential and a little bit of a low pass here. So if we take this off, it's a very slight, slight change, but it's like I said, these tiny little things that once we start adding them over and over and over throughout time, then it really starts to make sure everything is nice. And we added a little bit of low pass because once we add more distortion, it's going to give us some more higher harmonics, which you don't necessarily want. So, so for these settings, the dry wet is going to be 15%, the drive 22.5 dB, and then we turn on this filter at a, on a low pass 24, and then the cutoff is going to be 718 hertz, and it's going to be on post for the routing. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now let's take a look at both of these engine two and the utility engine. So both of these attack noises are going out filter two, as we can see for both of these tabs here. Now we jump back into the effects and let's take a look at FX, FXB bank. So it first hits a distortion and then it hits a EQ or hits an EQ after that. So first of all, let's turn off these, these uh, modules here. So that's what we're hearing initially. We turn on the distortion. We get a little bit more volume, but we also get a little bit more harmonic content. And as you go through these different types of algorithms, you'll really figure out which one works best for which kind of sound. And for stairs with a decent amount of this, it sounds pretty cool. And for this, I didn't, I didn't feel like we needed any of this uh, filtering going on. So I left that alone. And then for this last EQ, I just brought a little bit of presence here on which band do we have here on band three, that's going to be almost a DB 0.72 at uh, 7.4 K. Just a little extra here. So now we have both of our main sounds, we have our fundamental tone made, we have our both of our noise, our noise, and then our a transient attack, and that's made. And those are both going through their filters through their effects. Okay, so now we have mainly all of our parts together. Now, how are we going to glue them together in one cohesive unit? So what we do here is if we look over on this effects here, we're using this auxiliary send as almost a final processing spot for both sounds because they're both eventually going to hit this spot. So we have the send all the way at the top at zero. And then the return is also at zero. The first thing it's going to hit is a compressor, then it hits another distortion and then another EQ as a final contour of our sound. Because the whole idea is you don't want to have to do a lot of post-processing to this. If we can do it all in pigments, then that's the, that's the entire goal. So if we turn off our EQ, we turn off our distortion and turn off our compressor, this is what our kick would sound like with the uh, sound generation, the contouring and the effects. Let's turn, maybe we have one off here. Yep, we have this guy off here. So it's pretty close. I mean, that's definitely usable, but we still have a little bit more to do. So let's turn on this compressor here. Make it sound a little bit more uh, squashed down. And this is one of those things where it's to taste. I kind of compress this one a little bit more than I usually would. You can always back that off if you want to, but uh, yeah, compression is very to taste, I guess, for the specific sound. We can even drag it down a little bit. Uh, 
something right there to get a little bit more punch out of that. So with that being said, then we have the dry wet all the way to the right here. The threshold, I guess, in this situation is minus 8.16, ratio 8 to 1. The attack is going to be 20 milliseconds, and then the release is 50. So something we kind of do want to talk about, too, is the attack time. So we need to have time for our transients to get through, and then we compress. We don't necessarily want to compress the transients because that's going to be that initial attack, that that boom right right when we hit the kitchen we want to feel that quick attack and then we want to compress that low end so the milliseconds for the attack for the compressor is kind of important you really want to make sure to dial that in correctly anywhere from like 17 to maybe 20 20 some or, or like uh, low 20s is generally a good spot to uh, to be at and the release 50 milliseconds is fine next up we have the distortion here and this is going to be a hard clip, and this is going to be a little amount. And again, this is the small little screws that eventually make up the whole thing. So dry wet's 100%. The, uh, the drive is 6.53 dB. And then last, we have an EQ. And again, this is small changes, but there's some things that once you're synthesizing things, you kind of have a lot of material to work with. So we only really want to use what we like and kind of EQ the stuff out that we don't really want. So what we're doing here on the uh, first band here, we have this at 50 and then uh, we're boosting a little bit at 1.06. So a slight amount around the fundamental tone. And then over here on band number two, this is going to be at about negative uh, 4.6 dB downwards. And this is going to be a 165. And keep in mind, with a lot of kick drums, and this isn't just synthesis in general, this is kind of just kick drum in general, anywhere from like 150 to maybe 170, there's going to be kind of a nasty low end in there. And you maybe want to take a little bit out of that to really let the low, low end punch. Don't take too much out because then you're going to destroy the kick drum entirely, but just a small little move can really help make it a little bit more punchier. Now, moving on from there, we have this uh, high shelf here, and this is going to be 2 dB upwards, and the the frequency is going to be about 5K, and that's kind of just getting that clicky, the presence, the, the beater sound kind of out. So we're accentuating the lows here a little bit, taking out some of that mud, and then also accentuating the highs to kind of make it a little bit more brighter and present. And that's pretty much the example of a kick drum. If you'd like to get this patch for free, you can do so with the link in the video description below. I would highly recommend to also make this a few times because once you kind of get in the rhythm, you're going to kind of know how it's going to work. I mean, you can use the preset. That's great and everything. But I don't think you're going to learn as well as if you actually make it hand by yourself, right? Because you're going to notice how sensitive all these... All these uh, envelopes are, how sensitive the decay, the curves are, the little bit of noises, the tonality of the noises, where we want this cutoff to be. We can always have set presets and values, and that's great. But if you really want to understand where the tonalities and all that stuff sits, it's generally recommended to do it yourself a few times. And you can even have this preset up, open up a fresh one on the other side, and then kind of just recreate it and see how moving stuff changes. And you might find that you like something a little different, you know, instead of maybe 49 for the fundamental down here, you might like 52 or you might like 47 or something like that. And you, you might think that that's a better sound for your track. Really depends on what you want to do. But that's basically my thought process for making a kick drum. Snare drums are a little bit more complicated, and we're going to get into that in just a little while for the next video. But uh, before we close this out, one thing I do want to talk about since we're talking about kick drums is the tom drums. So you're going to notice over here, so I have this pattern right here, right? And then I have the, a little bit of a drum fill here. So those tom drums right there, so they're really not that much different from kick drums. So initially what we're doing is we have tom one, tom two, and then I made a floor tom. So Tom 1's panned a little to the left, Tom 2 is panned a little to the right, and Floor Tom is in the center because it's more a low-end sound, and the more lower-end stuff is generally going to be mono, so you might have some better luck having a Floor Tom in mono. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at some of these Toms and see how different they really are. So let's go to Tom 1, for example. Now, we double-click this here, and we give it a second for it to load. So here we go. So... We have basically a lot of our same stuff, but there's a slight uh, differences though that we should talk about. So first thing is going to be the fundamental tone, right? So over here, if we look at 130 Hertz, it's gonna be a little bit different than our 40, 49 that we had for the kick drum. So 
so moving on from that, this is 130. If you do, you could go to like 198, which is I think two octaves above the G, which you can. That might be a little too high pitched for you, but this is the spot where you kind of want to use your ears. You, you know, set that first initial tom sound depending on how high you want it. And then from there, we can always say, okay, now for this fundamental, for this tom, it's gonna to be 130 hertz. And it sounds pretty much like a tom, right? Now, the, the there's three main differences that we should talk about. One is the fundamental tone. That should be kind of obvious, but it goes without saying. The next thing is going to be the different EQ curve. So if we go here to the effects here, and if you remember, this FXA is only going to change the the uh, the fundamental tone. So if we turn these two off here, that right there is only really going to be affected by uh, FX Bank A. So if we turn these back on and take a look at the EQ here, we're cutting some low end out right over here. So if we want to look exactly right here, it's negative 3.7 dB. We're cutting at 151 hertz. So kind of in that broad range, it can get a little bit muddy down there. So make sure to adjust that EQ curve accordingly. And then the last thing, once we go all the way down here to the reverb, I've made a preset here called Tom Verb, which is just a little bit different than my snare verbs for the reverb module. But you do want some reverb on your on your toms but not necessarily on your kick drum so that's kind of the main three things you know the different frequency uh the fundamental tone of your drum and then you want to have the eq change because you're changing the tone and you're still going to get different mud in different spots and then at the very end we want to put a little bit of reverb on those toms and if we wanted to we could also increase the high pass as well if you we, if we feel like we need it at some point but uh, yeah, that's pretty much toms in a nutshell once you understand the kick drum the toms aren't really that much different because you know what's really different within the drums you have the kick drum with the big resonant shell then you have the pedal hitting the skin for the tom drum it's just a smaller version of that instead of a pedal hitting it it's going to be a drum stick so we just have to kind of change those things a little bit and that's pretty much uh that's pretty much it so hopefully you learned something from this um i would recommend like i said to make these quite a few times and then once you make your kick drum if you want to change it for your track then make your your tom drums from that base model of your kick drum and it's going to sound much more cohesive rather than starting from scratch all over again and last thing before we close out this video here this envelope vca the attacks one millisecond the decay is 408 milliseconds sustained is at zero and then the release is at 20 milliseconds so yeah that is the kick drum patch you can get it for free if you would like and yeah tomorrow we're gonna to be talking about snare drums and it's a little bit more complicated than you might think but with these base concepts out of the way it should be a little less uh, confusing so thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video